The purpose of this video is to help you understand Seymour Benzer's experiments with T4-phage. Using strains of T4-phage with different mutations in a locus called R2, Benzer explored the nature of a gene. Benzer did two experiments, one involving complementation and another involving recombination. It's important to make sure that you understand the difference. We now know that a gene is a segment of DNA, a series of base pairs, that is transcribed to produce an RNA. That RNA can be the terminal gene product, or it can be a messenger RNA that is translated into a protein. Before scientists knew much about the nature of a gene, Benzer tested the hypothesis that a gene is a segment of DNA composed of base pairs. Benzer's experiments asked two questions. First, can parts of a gene be separately mutated? The alternative is that an entire gene is either mutant or normal. Second, can recombination occur inside of a gene? The alternative is that recombination can occur only between genes. Benzer devised an experimental system that enabled him to detect crossing over between two independent mutations in the same gene. He could thus conclude that the answers to both questions he posed was yes, and the implication was that a gene is a series of base pairs. Benzer used two different strains of E. coli called B and K and two different strains of T4-phage, wild-type and R2, or rapid lysis mutants. The R2 mutant phage had both abnormal plaque size and abnormal host range. The R2 mutants make larger than normal plaques on E. coli B, and they cannot propagate on E. coli K at all. The inability of R2 mutants to make plaques on E. coli K was most important to Benzer's experiments. Benzer's central idea was that if the R2 gene is a series of base pairs, then different R2 mutants could have mutated base pairs at different locations along the gene. If so, crossing over between base pairs located between the two mutations would generate wild-type R2 genes. Just to be clear, suppose the wild-type R2 gene has an AT base pair at this position and a GC base pair here. One R2 mutant could have a transversion mutation at this location, and another R2 mutant could have a transition mutation here. The two different R2 mutant genes would each have a wild-type base pair at the location of the other R2 mutation. Crossovers within the R2 gene between the sites of the two mutations would generate a mutant R2 gene with both mutations and a wild-type R2 gene with neither mutation. Benzer realized that before he did the recombination experiment, he needed to be sure that his R2 mutant strains all had mutations in the same gene. Otherwise, his experiment wasn't testing the nature of a gene. All of his R2 mutants had the same mutant phenotype, larger than normal plaques on E. coli B and no plaques on E. coli K, and all of them mapped to a specific location on the T4-phage genome. One possibility is that all the different R2 mutant strains have mutations in the same gene, R2, which makes the single protein required for the phage to grow using E. coli K as a host. However, another possibility is that two separate genes, R2A and R2B, exist, each of which makes a different protein, and both of which are required for growth on E. coli K. In this case, some of Benzer's R2 mutant strains would have mutations in the R2A gene and others in the R2B gene. To figure out how many R2 genes were mutant in his phage strains, Benzer performed a complementation test. Remember that when E. coli K are infected with any single R2 mutant strain, the mutant phage cannot grow in this host, and so the cells don't lyse. Benzer co-infected E. coli K with pairs of different R2 mutants. If all the R2 mutants had mutations in the same gene, E. coli K co-infected with any pair of R2 mutants would behave the same way as when infected with a single R2 mutant strain. The cells would not lyse. However, Benzer found that some mutant pairs were able to lyse E. coli K. The phage in these pairs must have had mutations in different genes. Co-infected R2 mutant pairs that had mutations in the same gene, here R2A, could not make A protein. These co-infections did not result in complementation. No lysis of E. coli K happened because both A and B proteins are required for lysis, and neither R2 mutant phage introduced a functional A gene. Other pairs where both strains had mutations in the B gene similarly failed to complement. In some co-infections, one R2 mutant had a mutation in the A gene that prevented it from making A protein, and the other R2 mutant could not make B protein because it had a mutation in the B gene. Each R2 mutant genome provided the functional R2 gene that the other lacked, resulting in complementation to the wild type R2 plus phenotype, the ability to propagate in and lyse E. coli K. An example of what Benzer's complementation data would have looked like is shown here. 
A complementation matrix is a convenient way to record the results of pairwise co-infections. Each box represents a different co-infection experiment. For example, this box represents the co-infection of R2 mutant strains 2 and 4. A plus means that complementation occurred. When co-infected, the two mutant fades showed the wild-type phenotype. They could lyse the E. coli K cells. No complementation, no lysis of E. coli K is indicated by a minus. Benzer's R2 mutant collection contained two complementation groups, which he called A and B. No complementation happens in co-infection of E. coli K with any pair of R2 mutant strains within group A or within group B, but complementation is observed in pairwise co-infections of any group A mutant with any group B mutant. The complementation data indicates that Benzer's collection of R2 mutant strains includes strains with mutations in either one of two different genes, R2A or R2B. Each complementation group corresponds to a different gene, and the strains within each group have different mutant alleles of either R2A or R2B. Now Benzer could do his recombination experiment, knowing that all the R2 mutant strains had mutations in the same gene. He simply used only mutant strains in the same complementation group, for example, R2A mutants. Co-infection of E. coli B with two different R2A mutants did result in phage lysates that contained a small number of wild-type phages. These could be detected in the selection by plating the lysate of E. coli B on a lawn of E. coli K. Only the wild-type phage in the lysate will form plaques on E. coli K. Benzer started with a hypothesis that a gene is a segment of DNA. This hypothesis implies that parts of genes can be mutated separately and that recombination can occur inside a gene. Benzer detected crossing over between independent mutations in the same gene, implying that the two mutations are indeed in separate base pairs and that crossing over within the gene separates the mutations. These results implied that Benzer's hypothesis was correct. In addition, Benzer defined a gene as a unit of function, detectable experimentally as a complementation group.